Good morning. Good morning. TGIF. Welcome or welcome back to Bookie Monsters. My name is PK. It is Friday at last. Friday, March the 8th. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for watching. If you are watching live, if you are watching it later, thank you for watching it later. I appreciate you so much. Let's do a quick check in. Hi, Elena. How you doing? How am I? I'm okay. Uh, I've been up for an hour and on schedule so far, and I'm very glad it's Friday. How are you doing? Anything going on for you today? Uh, let's see, quick announcements. Uh, being Friday, I do not do sprints uh, tonight. Our next sprints are tomorrow afternoon at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, 3 p.m. Eastern, and those will go for five hours. And today being Friday, it's Freeform Friday, so we will be looking at whatever we feel like looking at and uh, typically it is looking at more of the cozies that are being released into the wild this week let me jump over here you guys doing anything for the weekend i am just relaxing we'll be doing crochet chalk and surprise i know uh, and reading, really, really enjoying uh, the books I'm reading right now. Uh, A Sinister Revenge by Deanna Rayburn. That's eighth in the Veronica Speedball series. And Network Effect by Martha Wells, which is, I believe, fifth in the Murderbot series. Love them both. Very happy. I think we were here. Good morning, Kim. How are you doing? Are you having a good week now that you don't, you didn't have any tests this week or anything? This was a even keel kind of week. Let me get rid of this banner. Clicking all over the place here. All right. Uh, murder in a Mayfair flat, a 1920s murder mystery. Pippa Darling Mysteries, book number three by Jenna Bennett. Miss Bennett. London, June 1926. The last Friday of every month, Christopher Astley, in the guise of his alter ego, Kitty Dupree, has attended a covert drag ball somewhere in London. In April, the ball was interrupted by a police raid that Christopher escaped by the skin of his teeth, only because he was yanked out of the nightclub before the raid started by someone who knew that it was going to happen. This month, the gathering has moved from the last Friday of the month to the first Saturday of the next, and the arranger has found a new venue. On the first weekend in June, everyone gathers in the old rector's club on Tottenham Court Road for a grand old time. All this is why Christopher's cousin, Philippa Darling, is alone in the flat she shares with Christopher when Christopher's other cousin, Crispin, Viscount St. George, sails through the door, three sheets to the wind from celebrating his 23rd birthday with his usual crowd of extremely fast, bright young people. And when a sozzled St. George, along with an always inquisitive Pippa, decide to get dressed up and crash Christopher's drag ball, the night ends with the dead body of a tabloid reporter on the floor of a Mayfair flat, and enough motives for murder to populate an entire wing of Wormwood Scrubs prison. Like the cover. But I already have many books on my TBR. Dude on Arrival, The Bridal Groom by J.S. Bothwick. I think these are re-releases. And it's March 26th. We did Murder in the Tea Leaves. Now that is a cute cover. Let's see this. for a ball game if it doesn't rain that's right yep just got first single shot yesterday my arm hurts today i follow up wednesday okay what you got the weekend free that's good and baseball the celebrity celebrity chef mystery a cozy for you to solve you the detective by julie devenham i like the cover only 114 pages. 
double check the release date. We're good. Unleash your inner detective and solve this interactive mystery. Oh, this is a choose your own. This is a choose your own mystery. A celebrity chef has arrived in the quaint village of Much Happening to shoot an, an episode for their widely acclaimed online show. However, tragedy strikes as the chef is discovered lifeless at the manor house, a hefty candlestick lying nearby. Led by Peggy, an old family friend with exceptional sleuthing skills, you will embark on a journey through the village. Immerse yourself in conversations with the film crew and village residents to uncover the truth behind this mysterious murder. Clean read. No graphic violence, sex, or strong language. Well, color me intrigued. Let's see. You're staying with Peggy Alcott, an old family friend, in the picturesque village of Much Happening in the Essex countryside. How to read this book. This book uses hyperlinks to take you to different points in the story based on the choices you'll make. Reading devices, e-readers, computers, and touchscreen devices, tablets, and phones can activate these hyperlinks, which will usually be underlined. On most devices, you can just touch the screen to select your choice. On a computer or laptop, you can use Control click plus or Command plus blah, blah, blah. Most sections of the story will have some text followed by a couple of choices, which will have more or less, which will have more or less than two. If you only see one choice where you expected more, turn the page for more options. If you get lost, you can select all locations, choose order option, and then select Bluebell College Cottage. And there's a map. Excuse me. That's adorables. There are six books like this. Ha ha ha! I might just do that. A cloud of witnesses. Sorry guys, I went down the rabbit hole. By Emily Hanlon, second in Martha and Maria Mystery. Life at St. John of the Cross Parish in Peacock Bays should have returned to normal after one of its priests was cleared of murdering a parishioner and the true killer put behind bars. But a troublesome new group called DSRA has moved in, led by the fire and brimstone father Thaddeus. When one of its devoted followers dies under suspicious circumstances, Father Seamus enlists Martha Collins to help uh, him oust Father Thaddeus from the parish. But when a second member of D.S. Array dies, the purple pest detective, Maria Cook, shuffles back into action. Can Maria unmask another murderer before he or she strikes again? Or will Martha become the next victim? I do like that cover, too. Cold as a Witch's Tequila Sunrise. Seventh in a Witch on a Rock's Cozy Mystery. 228 pages. And it is this week. This is by Lily Harper Hart. The big day has arrived. Hallie Waverly is finally getting the surgery she so desperately needs. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a wedding. Her boyfriend, Gray Hunter, is determined to be by her side for it. She thinks she's ready for it. Is she, though? The surgery itself goes off without a hitch. Hallie's recovery is another story. Ceding control of her beloved tiki bar to her brother and her boyfriend's brother only amps up her anxiety. Things get worse when a storm hits, and it's of the magical variety instead of the natural. When a body is found in the aftermath, things are bad. Things get worse when the body is identified as belonging to a local park member, pack member, and the last person seen with the woman is Gray's mother. Helena, of course, de denies being, or Helene, of course, denies being up to anything nefarious. Unfortunately for her, Hallie is in on her big secret, and it's time to share it. Hallie thought the hardest thing in the world would be the surgery. She was wrong. Now she has to tell the man she loves about his mother's betrayal and keep him from cutting his parents out of his life forever because of it. Drama. Fatality at the flower shop.
by Kelly Hash Hashway, 8th in the Traumatic Temp Agency. 201 pages, and we're good. What could be nicer than having flowers all day? Well, for Haley Hart, who might be allergic to those flowers, it could be a whole lot nicer, especially when her boss winds up dead. Libby Garner was known to get in the middle of trouble with everyone, and now that it's led to her demise, Haley is left to try to sort out the pieces. Or you can read it to the cops. But which of the many suspects is responsible for Libby's death? Haley will have to dig through a slew of unhappy clients, an angry ex-husband, a possibly bitter boyfriend, and countless jealous women if she wants to bring her boss's killer to justice. But if they called the cops, we would have nothing to read. Did we do bury the lead? I don't think we did. A big city journalist joins, this is by Kate Hilton and Elizabeth Renzetti. A big city journalist joins the staff of a small town paper in cottage country and finds a community full of secrets and murder. Kat Conway has recently returned to Fort Ellis to work as a reporter at the Quill and Packet. She's fled the tattered remains of her high profile career and bad divorce for the holiday town of her childhood, famous for its butter tarts, theater, and a century old feud. One of Kat's first assignments is to interview legendary actor Elliot Fraser, the lead in the theater's season opener of Inherit the Wind. Good play. When Elliot ends up dead on stage on opening night, the curtain rises on the sleepy town's secrets. The suspects include the actor whose career Elliot ruined, the ex-wife he betrayed, the woman he abused, and even the baker he wronged. With the attention of the world on Fort Ellis, this story could be Kat's chance to restore her reputation. But the police think she's a suspect and the murderer wants to kill the story and her too. Can Kat solve the mystery before she loses her job or becomes the next victim of a killer with a theatrical vent for vengeance? Read it and find out. Chilled to the dog bone. February 23rd. Why on Rye? Why oh Rye? Seventh in the Bohemia Bartender's Mysteries. And we're good. Bunnies, Bonnets, and Bedlam in New Orleans. Are the rhyming threats of a th crafty con man a good reason to return to New Orleans? Maybe not, but mixologist Pepper Reveille wants to neutralize her nemesis. She hopes she'll have the t she'll have time for cocktails and Easter parades with her friends too. If you're looking for, oh, well, she see, look at that. I should have known. If I looked at the cover, I could have told you this was Easter. So seasonal, uh, as well as the next step in her romance with fellow bartender Neil. But they don't count on finding a body in their hotel room, the machinations of her vexing ex, Mr. Mixie, and drama with her quirky family. To clear her name and settle the score, Pepper must crack the case and figure out if her increasingly dangerous enemy engineered the murder or if another killer is involved. As they face a farting ghost, an unexpected gig, spooky surprises, and the wacky charms of the French Quarter on Easter weekend, can Pepper and Neil unravel the mystery before they're flamed like a lemon peel in a vocare? Which reminds me, one of the best, the Chocolate Bunny, uh, best title I ever saw, The Hollow Chocolate Bunnies of the Apocalypse. First in the Eddie Bear series, which which is as nursery rhyme as you think it is. Oh, come on, show me like the original cover. There we go. There's well, kind of the Hollow Chocolate Bunnies of the Apocalypse. Isn't that just the best title ever? I love that one. I just got notified that we've gone live. Way to keep up, YouTube. Chilled to the crone. 
Is it a law that you have to have puns? Probably. It won't sell unless you have a pun in the title. 11th of the Spells Angel Cozy Mysteries by Amanda M. Lee. Winter has descended on Hawthorne Hollow like a chilly blanket, and all Scout Randall wants to do with her days is snuggle in bed with her gas station chicken and wait for spring to arrive. Nothing in her life ever goes the way she planned, however. There are gods afoot, as if Scout didn't have enough to deal with. The Nordic goddess Scotty Skatey, is in town, and she has something specific on her mind. With the new Lamia Apex down for the count, whether she'll survive her ultimate transition, I apologize, I'm probably saying these wrong. Nobody can say. Scout thinks she has some, some breathing room to get to know the family that's only recently come to town. Instead, she's got a god to deal with, and she means business. Scout's magic is ever-evolving, but is she strong enough to face a god? Etc. Tapping out because I can't pronounce things. Death by Misadventure by Anna Legat, a sobering murder mystery. And we're good. Getting lots of stars here. Isaac Wotan is a young delinquent and a constant headache to his parents, so it comes as no surprise when he crashes his quad bike into Priest's hole and breaks his leg. Maggie and Sam, on their way to hospital to visit Sam's mother, give Isaac a lift. But that's only the beginning of Isaac's troubles. Soon he's found in the graveyard, barely alive, and with his head bashed in. He's having a bad day. And the graveyard is a scene of bizarre nocturnal activities, and Vicar Quentin suspects Satanist forces are to blame. The vicar is a man of convic conviction, and he combats all manifestations of paganism, including the ancient stone circle, which is Bishop Wells' pride and joy. That puts him on a collision course with Maggie Kay. But Maggie has her own crosses to bear. Miss Daisy Rodich, the first paying guest at Badger's Hall, disappears without a trace. Isaac dies in hospital. His parents are inconsolable. Maggie vows to find his killer. No kidding, it's a sobering murder mystery. It's fluffy, but it's not. Oi. Han Lahane, there's a name. Oh no, this has been out a while. This has got to be a re release. Really? Or are they just misnumbering? I think they're just misnumbering. $23 for a paperback? not. Yep, that is a re-release. I thought so. You're running out of time, so we're just going to look at covers right now. Uh, Xed in the Xeriscape by Dale Meyer. Lovely Lethal Gardens, number 24. Why the or a glow gloms. Now oh, that one is not a great title. It takes you, makes your brain work for it. Murder She Witches number four by Cat McGee. Cirque du Slay by Rob Osler. The Marinara Murders by Joanne Pence. Cook and Inspector number three. Ah, oh, spaghetti. Spaghetti would be my last meal if I had to choose. Blessing of the Dogs by Niels Plackey. Golden Retriever, number 18. I am friends with that guy. Through a mystery group. Uh, Stephanie Rowe, Triple Trouble. Tr triple trouble. Uh, number four in... Uh, it says Triple Trouble, but it says the title is Margarita Mayhem. Down below. Okay. Devil in a French Press. Orchard, Orchard Hollow, number four, by A.N. Sage. Murder and the Missing Dog, by Susan C. Shea. That is second in Chateau in Burgundy, number 
The Shepherd's Pie Alibi by Jeffrey Shields, Guy Van Do, number nine. Cindy Stark has one called Bespelled Cookies, Cookie Corner number 10. Oh, Camilla Trincheri has one, The Road to Murder, Tuscan number four. Dang, I wish we had time to do these. Maybe we'll go back next week. There's Something About Magic, Witching Hour number eight by Christine Zane Thomas. Murder at Atkins Farm by Diana Zarissa, Margaret and Mona. Number one. That is a very pretty cover. Cherry Dead by Annabelle Chase, Bloom and Psychic, number seven. A Tinker with Death by Julia Hughes. Creeps, Cash, and Corpses, Katie and Maverick, number seven by Mary Seifert. Tweet, tea, I was going to say Tweet Pots. Teapots and Tweed Caps by Corinne Winters. This is Detective Grandpa number five. And out today, the Dubrovnik Book Club by Eva Glynn. I like that cover. Death in the Offing, book number two by Alicia K. Accidental Psychic Series. Library of Thieves by Una Madison. Alex Moore, number four. A couple of these here I'm going to go back and take a look at for myself personally. Girlfriend Retreat, Cheaper Than Therapy, Magnolia Bluff, number 22, by Linda Pirtle. Lilacs and Larceny, by Elsie Turner, Pedal Pushers, number 6. Danger in Delta sex Sector, A Lady Elizabeth Cozy in Space. Number four by Diana Zarissa. Princess of the Savoy, Priscilla Tempest. Number three by Ron Bass. I recognize that, that cover style. That's, that's, I've not read it, but I recognize the cover design. And Perfect Virus by Nick Saint. Mysteries of Max number 79. Those are pretty quickly through there, but I wanted to make sure everybody saw everything, so everybody at least got a little bit of a highlight. That library book appears new according to Goodreads. People are reviewing ARC and NetGalley. Oh, okay. Interesting. Thank you for checking. All right, guys. Well, that is all we have time for today. I've got to run to the post office on the way to work. Then I have to work. Uh, I hope you guys have a good Friday. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a good weekend if I don't see you. But if I do see you, just a reminder, we do have sprints tomorrow afternoon at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, 3 p.m. Eastern. They'll go for five hours. No sprints tonight. Uh, that is time I spend with Steve. Uh, even though I work for him, it's always work-related. So Friday nights is kind of our, it's not really a date night, but kind of hangout night for a little bit. Um, uh, so, uh, other than that, we'll, uh, Monday morning, we've got new books to look at that are being released into the wild next week, starting with Cozy Mysteries. And, uh, so I hope to see you there too. Have a very good Friday. Take care of yourselves. Read good books. It's okay to set a book down if you're not enjoying it. Books are fun. And if it's just not the right time, that's okay. Set it down read something else. And as the banner says here, don't be a bookworm, be a bookie monster. Om nom nom. Have a good day. God bless.